Hey everyone, welcome back to Retrospect. Today's video I'm showing you some painting techniques and I'm going to be doing a cartoon mashup. The first technique is how to transfer an image that you've printed from your computer onto your wood panel. All you need to do is scribble on the back of the image with a very dark pencil, I'm using an 8B here, and then you tape it down in the positioning you want, I'm just using a ruler to make sure it's level, and then you get a really hard pencil, you can even use a ballpoint pen and trace over your image making sure to get all the little details. And then I like to flip it back and forth to make sure that I've got every line. So you'll see me doing that a couple times. And there's your image. After I do that, I like to take a kneaded eraser and just sort of lightly rub off some of the pencils because otherwise they can get into your paint and muddy up the colors. So the idea behind this painting kind of just came up from an urge to use something Disney related. I've always loved Disney and I especially love the older movies. The animation style is so beautiful. So I thought I would look up one of my favorite movies, which is Robin Hood. And I found an animation cell of Prince John and I cut off his head in Photoshop and replaced it with Felix the Cat. I also edited the angle of the crown and the size to make it fit a little better and then I printed it out and, and then you saw me transfer it. So now I'm just filling in all the basic colors. Painting cartoon imagery like this is really fun and also really easy because they often use very flat colors so you don't have to do a lot of blending. It's kind of like paint by numbers. It's really soothing actually and it's really fun to watch it all come together too. Sorry if my voice sounds a little froggy this week, I'm actually getting over a cold. Well, I hope I'm getting over it, so my throat is a little dry and a little scratchy right now, but I'm doing my best. I like to build up the colors in a gradual state. I generally tend to go for darker colors first, though this time I chose the yellow because there's not a lot of dark colors in this composition. And the white I generally do as late in the game as possible before black because sometimes you can smudge stuff onto it and dirty the white. But now I'm going to tell you about another technique that I call flooding. And it's really useful when you want to have a nice, even, flat field of color. If you don't want your paint to be textured and ridgy like it can be with oil paints or acrylics, I find that especially white is really, really bad for getting ridges or bumps in it when you paint a big area. So I use this technique I call flooding. And here's a, just a quick little peek at my doggy. Oftentimes when I'm painting, she's just hanging out in my lap, sleeping. Hi, Pico. Even as I record this voiceover, she's in my lap, sleeping. And what you do is you, it's kind of like when you ice a cookie with royal icing. You have to really get a good consistency to your paint. So I like to make it pretty watery. And then I sort of spread it into the area with my brush and sort of swoosh it around, as you'll see, to spread the paint evenly. And it'll be a very wet, slick surface and you have to let it dry and level out on its own. But once it does, it gives you a very nice, even, consistent surface that you can work from. And you can layer on top of that again and again if it's acrylic gouache. And it makes for a really easy painting of big white areas. I'm purposefully leaving the color of the, the rest of the robe until the end because I was really unsure how I wanted to paint it. And you'll see in the end I decided to keep the normal red color, but I was undecided as to which way I wanted to go with that. And now I decided to do the black just again so that I could see what most of it would look like before I went in and did the red. And here's one more technique called scrubbing. It's a watercolor technique that I use in gouache as well and you use a brush with firmly packed bristles and a tiny bit of water to just lift off and wipe away any slight mistakes that you've just made. It's not good if you're using it on top of regular gouache because sometimes you can lift off the bottom color too, but since most of these colors are acrylic gouache, it works really well. But you can't do it once the acrylic gouache is dry. And you'll see me use it a couple other times throughout this painting, like there I go again, just tiny little corrections, especially with something so graphic and bold like this, I like to make sure that my line work is really precise, or as precise as my fallible human hand can get it. I always find that doing the black outlines is the most satisfying part. It's a little tricky sometimes, especially getting a smooth, even line, but it makes it look so good at the end. The 
here's just a close-up of me doing the crown details. I'm using an even smaller brush this time just to make sure that my line weight is nice and precise. I often find that when I do the outlines of stuff, I need to rotate the wood panel a lot so that my hand and wrist can get the right gesture for each stroke. So you'll probably notice me rotating the wood panel a lot as I need to. And here, I'm just going back in and touching up some of the lines because sometimes it's a bit of a back and forth process for me. Sometimes the outlines will overlap a bit too much, like on the crown there, and I'll need to go in with a yellow color again just to touch it up. And then sometimes I touch it up too much and I need to go back with the black color, so it's a bit of back and forth, but I like to make sure eventually that I have a smooth black line and good color in the right spot. So that's a bit of my attention to detail that I like to make sure I cover all the areas like that. painting was really fun to do. It took me, I think, an evening and then a bit of the next day. So I think I had maybe two and a half hours of footage real time from this and I've sped it up obviously. But it was pretty quick. And finally, here I am going in with the red paint. I think it was the right choice. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And I'll just have to go in and put the black outlines on those areas afterwards. And here's an instance where the scrubbing technique kind of got away from me. I tried to touch up that one line there didn't like it so I went in to scrub it away and then I ended up just blurring the paint way too much. So I had to keep going back in and going back in and eventually I used even a Kleenex and then I just had to paint white over top of the area. And that's how the finished product turned out. I'll have full pictures on my Instagram as well. I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye! Bye!